Sloan, how are we doing today? Pat, episode eight. The Welcome o- to the Powahana podcast. Episode eight. The Ocho. Ocho. We'd, at least we knew what episode it was today, so we're starting off on a higher note here. It just means that we're doing them a little more regular, and we're seeing each other in this setting more, and it's, you know, consistency. Good thing. Consistency Got to keep key. it up here. We've been, I know... I know our audience has been waiting for some more info on what's going on in the market. Um, it's been real interesting market, for sure. Um, I mean, it's almost like hard to really quantify what's going on. Yeah, I mean, across you know all the different segments, I think each one there's kind of unique things going on in each one. For sure. Obviously, higher end, you know, resort markets are, you know, there's. There's stuff going on on in the residential side and the condo side that right. is completely different. You know, residential stuff seems to be doing well on the higher end. And then the condo side, it's slower just based on all the legislation and everything going on combined with election year and all the, the stuff that's going on from a macro perspective in the country. And um, then you go into entry-level points of various markets are, are, are doing pretty good, it seems, which... Yeah, no. Since, since I've been working, it's kind of always been the case that entry level market is is always strong. Yeah, well, it, it, I think we took a dip when rates spiked. When rates are yeah, over eight yeah, yeah. percent, that segment did slow down. Um, you know, I think really a news flash here: rates are down to six and a quarter, folks. Burr, 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 burr. News flash. Uh, huge, huge improvement there. I mean, it's. We have clients that are, you know, they got a quote maybe two, three months ago, and they got another quote today, same price, and the payment is significantly lower. It's amazing what 1% will do to your interest rate. So we're hovering in the six and a quarter range now. Um, You know, Fed meeting is next week. Everyone's expecting a quarter point rate cut there. So I think, you know, a lot of people are saying that that is already priced in. So it's not like we're going to see a massive drop, but I think the trend for mortgage rates should continue to be lower, we hope. Um, so but, wait, they're able to to already price that in based on what they just, think is going to happen? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's how the entire stock market works, bud. Wait. <laughs> predicting the, wait, fu- wait, wait, predicting wait, wait. the future here. For real. <laughs> yeah. So the companies are predicting what they think is going to happen based on the data they have. Got right? it. Um, so the market prices in this rate cut and establishes their current rates based on that. I see. Um, and if that actually happens or doesn't happen, will affect the market at that time, right? If the predictions were correct, typically the market remains stable. Yep, yep, yep. If what they predicted is wrong and something different happens, like correction, or you something. know, then then that's when you see big shifts in the market. But because I, I got a client right now that's that's wanting to wait until we're under contract on something, and he's wanting to wait until you know that I think it's like the 18th or something, or yeah, the 20th, yeah, next week, yeah, next week. and he's wanting to wait until then to lock his rate, and him and the lender are kind of going back and forth on why that's a good idea, why it isn't, and it's you know, it's a tough one. Um, the there's a good chance that rates are going to trend lower. Yeah. I don't think they're going to bounce significantly higher. So maybe he's got a, an advantage to waiting, but there you are gambling, right? Because there are, who knows, right? Things can always happen. Um, but I don't think it's going to shift that much in either direction. I think that's probably what the lender's telling him. It is. Is like your cost benefit is not really there, your risk reward, right? I mean... You might save like an eighth or a sixteenth of a point if you wait till next week, but there's some risk in that. So I, I you know, it's hard to say. That's more the lender's world, right? But I, I think we're kind of in this stable declining phase, is what it seems right now. But I mean, needless to say, get, we're get, looking get, way better than we were at seven and a half. I mean, eight and a quarter. People were getting quoted tough. not long ago. That was tough times. Not long ago. Um, well, so it's a good idea to, to stay, if you are in the market to buy, go ahead and, and stay qualified and see what's going on. For sure. Always be. Because those be, payments are changing dramatically. They, almost daily, right? Yeah they, yeah. they fluctuate pretty much every day. We're talking on a simple, like, million-dollar loan, thousands of dollars per month yeah. difference in your mortgage payment. It's crazy. Um, so, yeah, interest rate, significant impact. So 
it's encouraging to see. And everyone's always been talking about this double-edged sword, right? Rates are coming down. Buyer, yeah. Buyer demand comes up. Pricing comes up. You kind of, there's that window, right? And we've been talking about that. Like, are we in that sweet spot? It um, seems to rates be. Are, it seems to be kind of a sweet spot for buyers. Rates are good, or much better. The buyer demand is there, but it's not It's not on fire by any no, means, no, no. right? So people are getting deals. We're making offers well below ask. Yep. There's negotiations happening. Sellers are seem much more motivated. So it's kind of this nice sweet spot here. Um, if I'm a buyer on the fence, you know, I'm, I'm definitely looking at this window as an appealing time. And we've been sharing that with our clients. Yeah, and it, it, it does seem to be working. Kind of yeah. like you said, just, just going in and, and putting pen to paper and getting something in front of these sellers when they've been on the market for a month or two and, you know, not, hadn't gotten anything. Yeah. You just get something in front of them, it excites them, and, and they're, they're obviously willing to work with you most yeah, four sure. times than not. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It seems... We've been we've been through this long period of sellers living in 2022, where you know they're holding out for their number and they're not going to budge. Um, I think people have come around a little bit. Yeah, everyone's a little more realistic now. So I think conditions are, are pretty ripe for fair value. Um, but I mean, that being said, I gotta we gotta jump into some of these stats because you know it's crazy to see. You know, you feel what's happening in the market. We're doing it day to day, but the numbers are very interesting. I mean, values are up year over year. All segments, values are up. Do you think that does have, uh, that has to have something to do with the interest rates, right? Because one year ago they were high, and then now that they're lower, it has to be some sort of factor. Potentially, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, you know, we're, we've been hovering at the single family is one three, right. right? We've been hovering in that range for a bit now, um, you know. Are, which is about 10% up over last year. Yep. So that's healthy increase. Condos, um, we're hovering at 900 on which the median. Is, which is, based on what <laughs> we're seeing and feeling in the market, the fact that, that condo prices are up overall is, is pretty remarkable. Yeah, yeah. We're up um, 8.5% over last year. So, I mean, it doesn't feel that way. And I'll get to the next numbers, which yeah. really tell a bigger, you know, kind of more of the story. Um Pending volume is down 20%. Closed volume is down 10% on the condos. Okay. So year over year, you know, we're, we're not selling as many condos. Less transactions. Um, inventory, big one here. So condo inventory, let me get to that page, is up. What page are you on? A crazy amount. 275% year over year. Increase in condo Increase inventory. Increase in condo inventory. That's... Almost it, three times. That's substantial. Yeah. So we've almost 3 x our condo inventory year over year. Which, which that, makes I, sense. Agreed. I, that's, I have felt that. And, you know, we look um, at, at Wailea and Kihei specifically all the time. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's like... It's more, a, in, it's more inventory than I've ever seen. Yeah. 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 And it's... I mean, historically, we got we to gotta put a little asterisk yeah, here. Yeah. Historically, it's still below what our averages were. Even on Maui? Yeah. Wow. Um, but compared to the past few years, post-COVID, yeah. way up, you know, three times as much condos, or as many condos. Um, but a big factor in that, we got to touch on what's going on, you know, with the local government. We have this STR bill proposed for short-term rentals. Yep. Um, that's contributing to this glutton of inventory. I like it. Um and I, I know we touched on it on a previous episode, but basically what it is, um, you know, post the Lahaina fires, we've 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 had a major housing shortage here for a long time, um, but it got worse with the recent tragedies, and the local government's trying to find solutions to increase housing inventory, increase supply, um, because they blew it for the last decade legislatively. Yep. Um, and did not work with, you know, not work effectively with developers. Yep. Um, th there's been a very limited amount of new housing coming to the market. Um, so what they're looking at doing is taking what's called the Minotoya list, right? Um, this list that... Um, it's from the 90s, right? From the 90s, and it was... I forget the guy's name, but his last name is Minotoya. Mr. Minotoya. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Minotoya. <laughs> yeah. Um, determined that all these complexes that are apartment zone that have been vacation rentals for a long time are kind of grandfathered in, right? Yep. 
these can be vacation rentable forever um, because they were before the zoning changed. Apartment districts now do not allow short-term rentals. Right, anything newer than 1992, right? Uh, 1990. 1990, okay. Um, so any of the new stuff, not rentable. All that stuff that was built before then, yes, rentable. Oh, yep. That's kind of the Minotoya opinion is what they called it. That was then signed into law about five years ago. Yep. So all these were vacation rentable. They're talking about taking that list, taking those complexes and saying, no, these are long-term rental only. 7,000 units, right? Uh, 7,000 units are on that list. Um, so a significant portion of the overall short-term rental inventory on the island. Um, so that's what's been going on. Um, that was proposed, God, how long ago was that? That was several months ago. Yep. Um, about a month and a half or so ago, two months ago, um, the planning commission um, voted to pass that bill on Move to forward. the county council. Yep. Um, but they made some kind of comments. They didn't really suggest full revisions, but they made some comments. Um, so what they're doing now, um, they're waiting on this economic impact study uh, that UH is doing to tell us how, if we take all these rentals off the market, you know, how is that going to affect the overall economy? Which we, we spoke on that too. Like that yeah. was kind of our number one, you know, note from the test, the public testimony at the hearing was that there was really no any sort of data about the broader economic impact to what getting rid of seven thousand short term rentals would do to to the island. Yeah, there was nothing about that, and they just said it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And so hopefully, when that economic study does come, it it provides some color to the situation on a broader right. And hopefully, it'll be unbiased. I mean, we, we just, I just hope it's not a bunch of BS, right? Yeah. It's it's easy to do that in politics, but. Um, there's no doubt that it, it would have a significant effect, right? And we, we know these properties, we deal with them every day. Um, well, I think some of them could definitely be viable options for affordable housing for people. Yep. I think a broad majority of them, it makes no sense. They just weren't built to, for Not people built for to that. live there in a long-term scenario. Yeah. They just weren't. Yeah. I mean, just the operating costs alone in these places. I mean, anything on the water immediately out. Yeah, I think so. You, you've got your flood insurance. You've got Seawall your stuff. HOA dues, yeah. your shoreline erosion going on. Just the maintenance alone on those is outrageously expensive. Um, so getting these anywhere near an affordable range just doesn't seem viable. But, you know, there's definitely buildings around the island that you look at and you're like, okay, you know, this one could make sense. There's some that were originally built, built, originally that built exactly. for either workforce housing or apartment, exactly. you know, apartment buildings, and then were converted. So it's like, let's look at those. That would make sense, right? Like, let's do something logical and take the ones that, you know, might be viable to work and let's convert those. And, you know, that, that makes sense to me because I think we do need... We do need housing, obviously. I, I mean, it's, it, it's it's an issue all across the country, and, and we feel it here specifically, obviously, because yeah. we live here and we work in the market. But yeah. there just has to be a sensible way to to make this work for everybody. Right. And killing uh, a local economy like such as Kihei just doesn't seem to, to make sense. Oh, it, like it, it, it would it'd be damaging. Yeah. Um, and I think we've got a new housing director. She yep. got voted in. Pretty excited about that. Great experience. Very knowledgeable guy. Um he's pretty focused on increasing housing units. Um, pretty excited to see what, what he has planned. Um, Cause it's kind of the first time in a while we've had someone, I mean, with a brain really to lead the charge on uh, how to create more housing in a community like ours in a, in a high cost area. Right. It's, it's a very difficult. It solution. is because, because just developing it isn't really a feasible option just because, it, land costs are land too costs, high. They're, they're very high, and so there's got to be some sort of balance in yeah. development. It's and, public public private partnership, yep, right? Yep. Government's got to work with private developers, you know, either by giving land for housing or subsidizing this land ownership, and subsidizing that developer's costs to get it built affordably, and then the consumer sees an affordable price or an affordable rent. Um, but yeah, it, it's, we're, we're kind of at a turning point here. It seems like, you know, this is really in focus now, which is good. We, we need it. You know, it's, it's, we're, we're seeing it affect our communities. We're seeing people have to move off island. We're seeing local businesses closing 
and we have this imbalance here that we need to kind of restabilize. And it's not just Maui, right? This is a problem. I think so. All over, you know, this is a problem all over high cost areas, any kind of desirable place in the country sees this stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely, uh, you know, interesting times there. Um, what's that doing to the market is really the big question. Well, I think that's the main driver in the, in the condo yeah. inventory increase. It just, yeah. you have to, to speak to that, I think is, yeah. is the main driver yeah. of the, the almost three times increase in inventory year over year. Right. It's just. And buyer demand. What's it's going on. Yeah, in in those in the markets where it is a little more tourist driven, tourism driven. Yeah, it has you know affected it. There's more inventory yeah. and less stuff moving. So, oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, there's there's no buyer demand right now for those apartment zone buildings. You know, we have lots of clients in those in those buildings. We have listings in those complexes, um, and there are zero showings. Yeah, you know, no one's no one's willing to you know jump into the unknown yeah. right now. It's, well, the, the it's, pro, a, the, it's a wait and see, right? It's like when I talk to my financial advisor once a year, every year, and they're like, what's your risk tolerance this time? It's kind of the same thing, right? Yeah. It's the same conversation you got to have with those buyers. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, if you get it for the right price and for sure. if your risk tolerance is high, then it could make sense. Yeah. If not, it's just, that's, it's just not happening. Yeah, yeah. And for the broad majority, it's clear that, you know, the risk tolerance isn't there right. for this type of situation. And so those, you know, those listings in those complexes are sitting, right? Um, so that's interesting. And, and I think, you know, because we're not seeing hotel zone. They're not moving those. either. They're not flying either. We're though. not seeing those I know, flying I know. off which, the shelves. Which I, did, I thought would. So you, we thought that would shift some demand, right? Yeah. Take it away from the apartment zone ones and shift it to the hotel zone, which are fully exempt from all this legislation. They yeah. are not involved at all. Um, but. It hasn't really, you know, and I think there's so much confusion in the marketplace. The consumers don't really know what this legislation means. We have the national media broadcasting that Hong Kong. they're banning. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, they're about, they're saying they're going to ban all short-term rentals oh, on yeah. Maui. Yeah, yeah. So I think people are just confused and they don't know enough, you know. And the the, the ones that do know what's going on, I think, are targeting, you know, they are targeting the hotels and complexes, but that, that market has been, you know, not as slow, but, but slow as well. Um, interesting stuff. Yeah. And just combine it with election year and yeah, you know, people not, you know, the tourism numbers are down here. Yeah. I mean, I think that's for sure. That's an important factor too. And, you know, and when buyers are getting into the due diligence on these hotel, even the hotel zone complexes, they're seeing that the, the rental numbers just aren't as strong as they were in years past. Yeah. So yeah. That, that could also be keeping them away, yeah. you know, from... Especially, like, if you're looking at 2022 numbers oh, yeah. versus 2024. You know, 23 was, um, you know, we had the fires in August, yeah. so that, you know, the last part of the year was a wash. Yep. I mean, there was no one here. Um, and, you know, I think this year we're looking at, you know, we've got a lot of data from CB Island Vacations, thankfully. We can kind of, you know, they manage a huge portfolio. Um, and, you know, we're about 10% off the mark year over year. But where is that from 22, right? Yeah. I think we're probably, you know, closer to 15 or so um, on revenue. Um, and that's got to adjust the pricing a little bit. It does. You know? So, yeah, definitely, you know, if... If you're a buyer kind of looking at this stuff, there's there's some opportunities out there. Um, everything's got to be evaluated, and um, that's what we're here for. Yep. You know, we're here to help walk you through that and, and kind of run through the numbers, see what makes sense, what's a, what's a logical price for a given property. But, you know, there's some opportunities. I think sure. so. I mean, we're seeing it, too. Even, you know, we have a few li- we've had a few listings in, in some of those zones, and, you know, with Realistic Seller and the right buyer, they, they will go. It's yeah. just a matter of, you know, being being realistic and for sure, you know, finding the right buyer for sure. Um, and you know, not all doom and gloom because <laughs> no, <laughs> that segment is. But yeah. I mean, we're, I mean, our our team has been extremely busy this year. Yeah, you know, we're we're up on volume over last year. We're doing transactions. We're doing deals. Um, things are happening. Yep. It's just there's segments, right? I mean. Uh, if you've got a house at one five or less anywhere on this island right now, hot, it's selling hot. Hot, hot. Yeah, yeah, that's we're back to our hot, hot or not, hot, right? Hot. <laughs> Single family, one five or less. Hot. Hot. Um, but 
you know, you get into that two mil, two and a half mil, a little slower, yeah. but still demand. Yeah. Um, you know, vacation rentals, we touched on that. That's slow. The high-end stuff, uh, high-end single family, you know, over five mil, seeing pretty healthy interest, know, still good. It's good. good. Um, it's that two, two, five to five where it's kind of interesting, particularly, yeah. up, particularly up country. Yeah. That two and a half and above range is pretty slow. I think it's, it's crucial to be priced to pro, you know, price yeah. right in that segment right now. Yep. You, it's got to look like a reasonable value and people are looking at it. I think that's the problem. But if in, you're in, unrealistic, it's, it's just not, it's not going to move. That's the problem with that entry level price point. In yeah. And we've talked about it before residential. You know, some of those those homes that haven't been, you know, updated quite as much. They maybe not have as big of an ocean view. And they're in that 2.5 yeah. to 3.5 range. They're just, there's not a lot of movement. There. No. Yeah. 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 So definitely segmented. Um, we gave you the stats. Um, why? We've been busy and a lot of people haven't been, Sloan. Yeah. You know, we're, we're staying busy. We're doing deals. A lot of brokers in the market are slow or, or just, you know, there's no deals out there. There's yeah, nothing the, happening. The, market, yeah, the market's slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no buyers. Um, what do we think? Why, why do we think we're staying busy? I, I mean, the key for me, at least, has been to be able to have, you know, different networks in different market segments. So whether yeah. it's Central Maui, residential, yeah, you know North Shore. I've done a fair amount of deals this year, even up country. That that one five to two five segment. I've done a couple of deals. Yeah, and, you know, even a couple of West Side condos we've sold. It's just being able to to be multiple across different segments and not be just hyper focused on resort markets. Yeah, which we tend to do when the market's good, right? We only want to do deals in Wailea and Kapalua. Yeah, yeah. In higher end, but if you're if you're willing to kind of cross over into you know other market segments and get comfortable there have networks there, have sphere of influences there. Yeah. Um, it allows you to to be busier in slower times. And I think, I mean, that's been the key for me at least. For sure. hundred percent. For sure. No, yeah. I think, yeah, you, you, you definitely hit it on the head there. That's, that's the key is, yeah. is having that breadth in your network. Right. Um, I've managed to still do a high percentage of my deals this year in that high end Wailea area. You've been great. Area. Yeah. Um, but there's just, there's not a lot of deals happening in there, but we, we're, we're making them happen. Um, and I think, yeah, just having, you know, a very strong database. We're staying in touch with our clients. We're staying in touch with our, con- you know, people wanting to know what's going on in the market, keeping people informed. Um, we're pushing our marketing still. Yeah. A lot of agents out there have pulled back on marketing and are kind of thinning their budgets and, and tightening the, things up. We're doing that. And we're, we're pushing. I mean, we yeah. just put... A very hard to sell. I got to keep it kind of tight lip, but an extremely hard to sell listing that hasn't sold for years and years and years. We just put in contract um, in South Maui, um, and I think it was because we that I've been talking with this buyer for months, but they saw our video in Europe. You know, they were scrolling, saw our video. They've been traveling in Europe for the last, like, six months. This has all been sight unseen transaction. They know the area. They own property on Maui, but right. they just haven't been here. Right. Saw it, got them intrigued, been talking them, you know, talking with them for months, and we just signed a contract on it, and we got a deal. Um, you know, it's it's just having those tools and executing our plan yeah. and not wavering, you know. People have been, you know, stopping marketing and stopping doing this and, they're, they're kind of all pulling back, and I think us pushing forward and continuing to push forward has been crucial to, you know, getting our clients' listings sold when it's tough and finding deals for our buyer Buyers, clients right. when, you know, you just – it's a very tricky market to navigate. Yeah, I think one thing that, that you've always been really good about is is your daily habits, and that they're, they're, they're the same. You, you try and talk to as many people as you can every day, have as many meaningful conversations right, every right. single day. Whether it's, you know, with someone that's immediately buying now, buying later, maybe yeah. they never buy, but you're having conversations, you're getting those reps in every day. And that, you know, I think that's important too. Having as many meaningful conversations every For single sure. day as you can with whoever will talk to you about it. Yeah. Just so at least you're working on your game, you're you're educating yeah. people, whether it's, you know, they're actually your clients or not, it doesn't matter. In my it's, opinion, you're just working. It's the most important thing in our business. I mean, everyone kind of overcomplicates our business, yep. but it's just talking to people about real estate, 
knowing your stuff, being educated, being up to date, you know, and conveying what's going on in the market to people and helping people make educated decisions. You know, it's just, it's pretty damn simple. It's the Villa Group difference. <laughs> I mean, that's what we say it all the time, yeah. but that is the Villa Group difference yeah. right there. And that's, you know, I think that's what separates us from a lot of different brokers, agents, and teams in our market. Yeah. It's just, you know, our ability to, to make stuff happen for buyers or sellers when other people can't. Yeah. That's no. it's pretty simple. Simple. Yeah. Simple. On that note, I think we wrap it. <laughs> yeah, right. I think we wrap it. That was good. That was great. Solid episode Ocho. That was fun, man. Um yeah, football, we, football real quick. Oh yeah, F- football. football. Rams, yeah. Rams lost your team. We had a tough week one, bud. That, Everybody's hurt. Tough week Stafford, one. Stafford's very uh, – I love Stafford. Oh, guy's a fighter. How can you not? Fighter, I mean, the man. Guy just, he Battle. Knew that was a heck of a game. It was great. It, Cooper Cup played amazing. It could have gone either way. It, it could have. Not um, having Puka Nakua is, is – Nakua's it's out. It's really going to hurt. It's going to be rough. Yeah. But Cup's looking hot. Um, got to get, so, Aaron, you know, get Aaron Donald back. Yep. Let's get him back. Yep. You know, um, I'm pulling for the Rams, too, for, for we, other reasons. We, but we, we got hope, bud. We got hope. I think um, so. My Chiefs. buffs, though. My buffs. Oh, <laughs> Gotta scope, shift to college. Sco buffs. <laughs> Coach Prime. Oh, man. It, uh, it's, 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 it's about to be dumpster fire level situation in <laughs> it's Boulder. It's getting there quick, bud. And the Louis Vuittons are about to be packed. Uh, uh, they're about to pack them up. Yeah. yeah Shador. He's, he's I, getting sent packing, bud. I mean, uh, we, you know. We're used to this as Buffs fans. It's true. I've, I've, you know, I've been been around, been a Buffs fan for a long time. Um, we're used to disappointment. Yeah. We had hope last year. This year, we had a little more of a reasonable expectation. Well, the schedule at the beginning of the year is much tougher this time yeah. than last time. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so less freebies. Um, we got one in the bag with North Dakota State. But barely. Barely. But they're they're, they're good pretty program. good for okay. what they are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I played that level. Uh, I know North Dakota State. They're they're legit. Yeah. yeah. Nebraska really showed showed us where we're at. Well maybe Nebraska's <laughs> They're good. I mean they're ma- solid. Maybe they're a step above what we thought Nebraska was too. You never really yeah, know until the, solid, the whole season man. plays I mean, out. That, and... Their their QBE is pretty mean, dude. That guy's good. Yeah. Um, Pat Mahomes Jr. Yeah. But yeah, we have we have no line on either end, and which is amazing. Like, <laughs> it's that's, just they re- completely how, reloaded the, the offensive yeah, line. It's and wild. They still it's can't still, protect, dude. Sanders is just getting pounded in the pocket, <laughs> and we got Shiloh out, broke his arm. Saw that. Oh, it's just Travis. So. It's Travis Hunter's doing it all, but yeah, but yeah. Hunter's Hunter's still a legend, bud. Yeah. But yeah, so another tough year for the Buffs. Maybe. Yeah. How's Chattanooga looking though, bud? We're zero two. All the water. Zero two. Lost to Tennessee. Big, obviously, major program. Right. If for those that don't know, Chattanooga is an FCS school, so a, a level below major Division one. And then we lost to Georgia State, who's also a major Division one program. Right. In a very close game, very end of the game, we lost like on the last couple of plays. So I think we're ranked like ninth in FCS. Yeah. So we're. You got we're, hope. Oh, we got a lot of hope, bud. A lot of hope. Playoff playoffs are bust. We need to we need to, to push forward and, and get into that national championship conversation eventually, but um, yeah, L- love the mocks and yeah. the mocks, mocks forever, baby. Great, great episode, bud. Go buffs, yeah, great, yeah. Solid, great, uh, great episode. Solid day. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll be back quick. You know, we'll be back hopefully next week. Hopefully. We're gonna fire back to back here. Let's do it. We gotta do it. Yeah. All right. All right, Pat. Later, Later. man.